Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. All right guys, today we are doing intro to all things Saint. So from 3D foundation to Demi color correctors. I'm gonna show you basic application, what differences you need to know between them, how a color match works, all the things to get started. If you wanna check it out, please keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to see all of my tutorials on 3D and Demi. And as always, thanks for being here. Okay, friends, if you're new here, welcome, welcome. If you are an OG subscriber, this will be a good review for you. So we're gonna be talking about 3D foundation and Demi. Um, a little bit about basic application, kind of how I recommend getting started. What you need to know from color match to application. You are brand new to Saint. I'm curious a little bit more about it, how to get color matched, and how to use these creams properly from your first application. I'll be out with that. So Saint technically has two different lines per se, but they are being merged into one. Okay, so I'm just gonna call 3D foundation, which you see probably the most of. It is a cream-based three-dimensional foundation system that allows you to highlight and contour your face really quickly and easily. So the great things about creams is that they will look like your skin, they have buildable coverage, and give you that youthful, dewy look to your skin that will make you look 10 years younger. That is the reason why I started using it. And I can tell you from experience, it gets better and better. The more you use it, your skin gets better. I can't say enough good things. So 3D foundation was always comprised of highlights, which is what you would think of a traditional foundation. Concealer, color corrector, all of those things in one. It is the combination of shades that can give you the perfect match. So I actually have swatches of all of our highlights. So I always, I guess, warn my clients that these creams are not like traditional foundation. The colors online are not at all. Like if you looked at the color in the 10, okay, this is not the color it's gonna look like on your skin. And if it is, you're applying too much. So these are extremely pigmented creams, meaning you're gonna need far less of these creams than you would traditional liquid foundation. I've been using this one for probably six months already. A little goes a long way when your color matched properly. So I always tell people they're very deceiving. Don't try to color match yourself online. That is what artists are for. We are trained with these creams and we have the most experience with them. And so I've been an artist for five years. I can honestly feel like I can color match in my sleep at this point. I color match completely 100% online from an amazing photo that you have to send me. And you might look at these and say there's very little difference between those, but I'm telling you, it is a combination of these shades that will allow me to make this makeup be customized for every single person, no matter your skin. So I was recently asked, how can a yellow based cream ever work on someone with cool undertones? And I'm telling you, it's because it's not necessarily one color that's going to just, you can slap on all over like a traditional foundation and it's going to work. We have so many different tones and colors and depths in our faces. And I will be honest, it was something I never realized about my own face until I started learning these creams and I learn how different it is from this part of my face to this part of my face. And that's something I look for as an artist that not necessarily you'd be able to even notice on your own face, even though you know your face better than anyone. It's things that I look for. And so those subtle differences in tone, color, all of those things, coupled with how you like to wear your makeup is how I color match. So even though some of these look extremely similar, they are very different. And one shade can make the difference between whether you 
love or hate your makeup and the way it's sitting on your skin and the way it's lasting on your skin because these creams don't work like traditional foundation either. If I was to slap on a color lighter than my skin tone, it actually would make my the texture of my skin look not pretty. You would see every pore, every bump, everything on your face, okay? So it gives you, it highly emphasizes texture it will make you feel washed out, definitely, but it will also not blend properly. And yes. thing, the most important thing I feel like is that it's not gonna give you very good coverage or longevity, meaning it's gonna wear off super quick, it's gonna rub off on things, and you're gonna be like, why am I having to apply so much of this makeup and it's not lasting on my face when everyone's showing what great coverage it gives? It's all in the colors, okay? So color match is numero uno when it comes to importance. So when we get to the application of the highlights, I will show you how I mark up my face and what that means as far as coverage goes. But the next color would be the contour color. So I'm sure you've heard about highlighting and contouring. Those highlights are gonna give us coverage and brighten the skin and give us that highlighted look whereas the contour is what's going to chisel out our features and give us that lifted contoured look. Um, it can really change the appearance of your face. I get asked all the time, but you are never too old to learn how to contour. I'm telling you, it can be the biggest game changer in your makeup routine. Our faces are not one dimensional. Like you can see I have natural shadows, but when I put on one color flat foundation all over my face, I naturally lose all those shadows and then suddenly my face looks flat and looks a lot less natural. So all we're doing is emphasizing those natural shadows we have in our face and that's why we use contour which are and which should mimic a natural shadow on your face. So they are gray based, okay? But then we also have bronzers, of course, if you love the warmth like I do, that is what gives that, mimics that look of a suntan where the sun naturally warm, gives us warmth to our skin. Now my favorite part, I don't mean to be a little biased, but I have a lot of them in here. So my favorite is all of the amazing lip and cheek colors. Um, I'll be honest, I was one of those people and I wore the same color for years until I discovered this makeup. And now I never wear the same color two days in a row because I'm constantly mixing and matching. So it is a blush and a lip color, but you Literally. can really make any combination you could possibly want, possibly desire. This is just a handful of the shades that we have. So sometimes it's a little overwhelming to choose one to begin with, but I'm telling you, it's the most fun. And then last but not least is Illuminator. And this is the, the shimmery shade. So in non-Saint world, we call that a highlighter. Um, it's what adds that touch of glow to our cheekbones or anywhere else you want to kind of reflect that light. And as the company keeps growing and expanding, the line keeps expanding as well. So we now have a lip liner, conditioners, perfumes, solid perfumes, mind you. Anything that can fit in a compact, um, they're expanding the line. So there really are a whole lot of options. I don't even have eyeshadows in here. Um, I have them over here, which is another whole ball game because I love me some eyeshadow. But you can pick your palette size once you get color matched and then you can always expand your collection as you learn what you like. Now, I wanted to quickly show you a little bit about Demi Color um, because this, I wanted to kind of explain because the line originally was created, and I have a few in here. This is the line that uses the color wheel, okay? So it takes a little bit more learning, I would say. It's not so intuitive as just putting highlight where highlight goes and contour where contour goes. It used to have a lot of shades. So if you see the website, there are a lot of different Demi color shades when it was designed for a full face product. And it was designed for a very much a no makeup makeup look. Like it looks like skin, shows no texture, it lets you filter out what you don't wanna see and kinda of highlight what you do. And it was very unique, 
There's nothing else on the market like it. But as the company saw how people like to use it, they decided to bring it alongside 3D as like an additional enhancement for 3D foundation. So a lot of people have discovered what I like to call the hybrid method, which is using 3D pretty much on your full face. And then those key areas that might be areas of concern of texture or discoloration, that using 3D in those certain areas might give you an increase of um, texture or cakiness or anything like that, um, this will completely take that away. So Demi is very unique in the fact that you use so, so little product. And I was just talking about how very little you use of 3D foundation, but Demi is like on a like 100 times level less. It is like... So very little, you probably can't even tell I've ever touched these creams and I've had them over a year and I've barely put a dent you in them. Use far less, but the cool thing is it doesn't increase the look of texture. So it is a complete game changer in my opinion on blemishes. Like I've never seen another makeup, even 3D foundation. Um, and I really don't have many, I have a, maybe a little little spot right there I could show you. But for the most part, you know how you try to cover a blemish with concealer and foundation and powder and all it does is increase the look of that texture where it looks dry and cakey like that. Like once you get it covered, all you see is the texture and it's it doesn't disappear. It just becomes more like the color around it. Demi, you can eliminate that. It it literally will cover it without texture when used properly and using the right color. So it does take a little bit of trial and error, I would say. Um, my favorite way to use Demi is, of course, blemishes and under the eyes because under the eyes tends to be an area that most of us over 35 have texture issues. Um, so I like to use it under the eyes. It's really good for dark spots as well. I would say my only place I don't feel like it is the best option for is large areas of hyperpigmentation. So if you're like me and you have a lot of freckles, if you're wanting to fully cover those freckles, it's going to be hard with Demi. Um, and I'll show you when I go to do my under eyes, but with Demi, you touch color to color, meaning anything that's bigger than the tip of this is going to be more than one color. And that can lead to it being a little bit more tedious. I'm not saying it can't be done, but most people I would say would rather do something quicker. So large patches of like large patches of melasma, hyperpigmentation or redness, in my opinion, I feel like 3D works far better on. You can cover it quicker um, just as easily. It might not have the same look, but I find like even this area, like my nose, for example, my nose is very difficult to use Demi on. The reason why is because I have a lot going on. Like if you look at my face, my entire nose is darker. I've got a lot of dark spots. I've got broken capillaries, but I've got this redness that goes, cause I have rosacea that goes throughout my entire nose. But then I also have hyperpigmentation across my entire nose. So in order for me to use Demi on that, I would have to um, use one color for all the dark spots, depending on how dark they are. Use another color for the redness. And I, it's just too tedious for my patience level. But under the eyes, I can do. One spot here, I can do. Blemishes is like easy peasy. So usually what I'd recommend for a client first starting out, um, a lot of my clients like to get color match for both 3D and Demi at the same time. And I can include that in your match. And I will recommend everything you would need for however you tell me you like to wear your makeup for 3D. And then if you decide you want to add some of the Demi colors and start trying learning Demi, because again, uses the color wheel, there is a little bit more trial and error to learning the process. Some people are up for that. Some people would rather have a faster face. And then once you love 3D, you can always try Demi later. That's what most of my clients do, but some of them want it all from the beginning. So you know you have an area of, of a lot of texture, I would say Demi will be your best friend. But 
For a full face application, I'd recommend 3D. So 3D is faster, gives more coverage. Um, if you're wanting a full coverage look, I definitely recommend 3D. Demi is a little bit harder to learn, but once you get a hang of it, it can be really quick, depending on how much of your face you're using it on. But there is nothing like it when it comes to no texture. It's not as heavy, it's more invisible, like it doesn't look like you're wearing makeup. So if you want something you cannot see, then your choice would be Demi. So I think I like the best of both worlds. I like to be able to use both depending on the day or use them together to get like the ultimate best finish to my face. The cool thing is the choice is yours and I can give you your options for either one depending on how you like to wear your makeup. So I wanted to show you real quick kind of a rundown. If you were to get color matched by me, what to expect from your picture. So the number one thing you do is you shoot me a picture. You wanna go stand in front of a window, hold your phone out level in front of you, and you wanna snap a pic. So hopefully you guys can kind of see. I just took this one for you guys. I do need to see your neck and chest. It is highly important to the way I color match because I ask you, what do you wanna match? I color match people every day. It is extremely common for people to have a lighter neck, darker chest. Different color, their face, neck, and chest are all very different colors. I ask you, what do you wanna match? Because you can be matched, and like I said, it's a combination of shades that I'm gonna match you to. So you could be matched a multitude of ways depending on exactly how you wanna wear your makeup. So I know sometimes people get matched by multiple artists and then they're very confused, but for one, every artist color matches very differently. Um, it has a lot to do with your eye, how much experience you have with the creams, how in depth you color match. I'll be honest, I'm a little, I don't wanna say nitpicky, that might not be the best word, but I am very particular on how I match. And that's why I ask so many questions is because it's not how I think you should wear your makeup. It's how you wanna wear your makeup. So if you wanna match the darkest part of your chest, I'm gonna give you colors to make sure that's what you're gonna be matching. And that's what's gonna give you the best longevity and coverage. Um, because there are multiple ways you could be matched. The same person could be matched lots of different ways, but that doesn't mean it's gonna work in the way you want it to. So I take all of your questions you give me and I determine what the best colors would be based on what you want. So if you tell me you want to not be able to see the makeup on your skin um, and you want very light coverage and you have no areas of concern, I'm gonna match you very, very differently to someone that has the exact same skin tone as you, but that says they have dark circles, redness, hyperpigmentation, and they want a full coverage look. Those two clients are completely different. I don't care how similar they look side by side, they're not gonna be matched in the same way. They're not gonna be given the same colors. And so I know not all artists even ask you what kind of coverage you want, but to me, that's an important question because I color match based on the coverage. And one of the biggest things I get complaints about from people who have been color matched before is that they're not getting their coverage they want. And it's because they either weren't asked some of these questions or more, more often times than not, unfortunately, um, they're matched to their lightest tones and not their darkest tones. That's the biggest issue I see with some artists. So if you're an artist, I know I got a lot of artists that watch my channel, please know the darkest tone is the most important, okay? Because if you don't match the darkest point of their face, that area of their face will wear off and what is the point of makeup if it's not gonna last more than a couple of hours? Or if the only way you can get that color to last on your face is by loading with a bunch of loose powder in order to get it to stay. I don't wear my makeup like that, and if you don't want to wear your makeup like that, you shouldn't have to. There are different colors you can use to get that look. So I like a very natural to medium coverage depending on the day but I wanna be able to easily get either one of those looks and show my skin and show the glow and because that's what I feel like is amazing about this makeup. So I promise you can get it 
without loading up on powder, okay? It's all in color choice. Okay, so back to my picture. I wanted to show you guys what my picture looks like. I mean, obviously the iPad's a little bit more blown out than in real life, but in front of a window with natural light is so important. It's the only way you can have no shadows on your face, see your skin color true to color, um, and then I can see every level of contrast in your skin, okay? Because that's what I'm looking for. Then, based on what you tell me, um, based on the level of coverage you want, based on tell me your concerns are, I will mark the darkest points of your face, okay? So for me, hopefully you guys can maybe see that, maybe a little bit. I marked right here, so I've got rosacea right here. Now, up here is a little bit darker, but I just put contour there and I don't necessarily have to color correct that. Okay, and you can see in this picture, I feel like it's very obvious that my nose is the darkest part of my face. So, and honestly, a majority of my clients, that is also the darkest point of their face. So, you always wanna pay, pay very careful attention to noses um, because a lot of times that, I mean, that sticks out, gets the most sun damage, and they also tend to be the most reactive, meaning you touch them, they turn red, people blow their noses a lot. You really want to make sure that color is going to last on the nose. So if your nose is a little bit darker, you might need a color corrector there. Just kind of depends on how much darker it is than everywhere else on your face. So I marked my chin right here. Um, obviously both of these areas, I have rosacea and hyperpigmentation and then the inside corners of my eyes. Okay. And then of course here, a lot of people have broken capillaries there or are naturally darker. Okay. So that is all the darkest points in my face. That is where I'm going to use my darkest highlight shade first. Okay. It's very important. I have Touch. to use the darkest shade to those darkest points first. If I don't, and I'm using a lighter shade there, it's gonna show texture, it's gonna wear off, it's gonna give very little coverage. I would have to use a whole lot of product to get it to cover with a shade lighter than that, um, which usually just in turn makes you look cakey. Um, it doesn't look like it's sitting on the skin well. If you're feeling washed out, you for sure have the wrong color. Make sure you message me ASAP. So let's go ahead and apply that. I'd say my favorite two brushes for that would be this end of the blend brush for the most natural finish, or if you do not wanna visibly see any makeup on your face, I would say try the blend brush. For most people, especially if you have mature skin, I would say try the blush of the blush bronzer brush. This brush will allow you to really buff in the smallest amount of your corrector. So this is my color corrector. I'm just gonna barely touch the product. And I'm gonna hit every one of those points marked on my face. Okay, so I'm using a buffing motion. Anytime you're wanting a very thin layer of anything, if you want natural coverage or if you are using color correction of any kind, you want to buff on the product so you get the least amount and it's blended in really well. Otherwise, you're gonna end up over applying. I didn't show you my little hyperpigmentation mustache in that picture probably was hard to see. Okay, so since my nose has all the issues, it is darkest red, hyperpigmentation, all those things, I'm gonna buff on more in that area. So this is the part of 3D that takes a little bit more trial and error. If you have certain areas that you want more coverage on, I say always start with buffing motion. Then you can always press on more where you want more coverage. So for me, I'm a little bit more red right here today. I'm going to press on a little bit more where I have hyperpigmentation. 
and then of course my nose, okay? And again, I barely have anything left in this and this will probably still last me a couple months. Okay, I'll show you this contour brush in a second, but I'm gonna use this small end to color correct my eyes. I have a lot of blue and purple. If you can see in that picture, I've got a lot of darkness in this inner corner. Okay, and then anywhere you have more spots, sometimes I like to use this more detailed brush. To press on more where I have any dark spots or blemishes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and show you this under eye with completely with 3D, and then I'm gonna use Demi over here. So with 3D, this color corrector is one of the best for blue and purple or just darkness under the eyes. The key with under eyes is just to use very little, really blend it out. And then you can always add a little bit more if you see a little bit more depth coming through. Okay, so that is corrected so far. I'll get asked because I know there's a lot on social media showing people using their fingers and painting on stripes and then blending it all out. And I will say that is a method, but for me personally, it does not work well um, because I've got so many different tones in my face and for the level of coverage and longevity I want. So for me, I would have to use this color in order to match the darkest points, but this color on its own is too dark for me. So if you so, are, all these colors might look very similar, but certain ones will correct certain areas of concern and certain ones won't. So if you tell me that you want medium to full coverage and you have XYZ concerns, most likely you're not gonna be getting that coverage or that look using that method. It's a little bit more rare unless you just happen to be the exact all over tone of a shade that's great at color correcting those as well. And you don't have a lot of depth in your face, meaning you don't have a lot of contrast. So you're telling me that you have hyperpigmentation, but I can't even see a difference in dark spots between the rest of your skin tone more than likely you're gonna be able to use that just fine. It's gonna still give you great coverage. But if you have a lot of contrast like I do where you have a lot darker spots, a lot of redness, or you're, you have rosacea like me where your uh, rosacea flares up and some days it's more red than others. Um, if you tend to have a lot of breakouts and blemishes, always those tend to be more red. As they're healing, they get darker. Those usually need some sort of color correction. And the most common I see is under eyes. Not all of our shades will correct under eyes in the same way. And to be honest, some of our shades, I feel like do not correct dark circles at all without a corrector. So once again, it depends on what kind of coverage you want and what areas of concern you have. And then I will look at those and actually look at how much contrast you have. And if I think that you don't need one, I will explain why. I will explain you want more coverage, some options, all of those things. So I try to give the most customized match for every single person I do. So that way you understand your options, your choices. And if you do try it and you're having issues, something that would help you, or of course you can always reach out to me. I mean, I troubleshoot on a daily basis. So, okay, now that we hit all the darkest points, you see I did not contour first. Again, I've got hyperpigmentation and redness there. If I contour first, my contour will just pull out the dark spots in my cheek and then my redness, it makes my contour pull more orange red. So if you have similar skin concerns, experiment try it both ways. You can try color correction method 
will always give you more coverage and a smoother finish and a more even look to your skin than applying contour first, in my opinion. Me personally, I have worse longevity with my contour when I do that method. So I'm all about whatever's gonna last the longest for me during the day. Okay, so once we've hit all the darkest points, you'll see that your final picture will actually look like this. So it'll have orange and white lines on it. Now, if I just barely have a little dot that means you're going to need very little. That means you're going to need to use this and just barely buff in a touch just to make sure that that next shade lays without any texture. The larger the line is drawn, the more you're going to need to apply in that area, correct, and to give you overall a look that's going to match whatever you're wanting to match. So the next shade in white is your brightener. On the side though, I have an explanation of application and also where your main shade is. So for me, I am three shades. Again, like I said, it's the combination of those threes that give me my perfect match. I would say a majority of my clients use three shades if they're wanting any concerns addressed or medium coverage at all. Full coverage, most definitely. It's the easiest way to build up to full coverage. So for me, I'm gonna go a little bit lighter, less warm. This one corrects, this one does not. So the only way for me to get a good longevity and correction is by using that shade. Then I can go down to my main shade. I'm gonna use the same brush, same method. I'm just gonna tap it in. And this time I'm gonna just kind of bounce the brush over every area of my face. And this is going to apply that shade to tone down and build up coverage. Okay, so it's gonna bring me back to matching. So this method will allow me to get a more skin-like finish than using just this shade alone. So this shade alone, actually will start breaking up on me in certain areas of my face. It won't last. I have to apply more and I also look washed out because it's just a touch too light. Now, a lot of times I get asked, well, why can't I just mix these two? And the problem with mixing is that then you're, you're changing the color completely. So this naturally, the undertones of this is what makes it an amazing color corrector. When you're mixing it, you're actually, this is neutral. You're making it more neutral. You're neutralizing it. It's gonna give less of a color correction effect and you're just getting a color in between these two. But I can actually control how much of this I'm applying for how light I go. So if you're applying that color and then you come in with this one, if it's still pulling too dark, you can easily apply more going to tone down even more. Whereas mixing the two, it's hard to get equal amounts of both of those shades. You're, you're never going to have the same look two days in a row. It's going to be much harder for you to control. But this one is really easy for you to just look and be like, am I matching? Do I have enough coverage? Do I need to apply more anywhere? It's very simple and all you're doing is pressing on so we're not moving. We already put the color corrector exactly where we needed color correction. Makes it easy peasy. Okay, again, I usually use this to get up closer, closer to my lash line, just to kind of tap on a little bit more. Do you see how much coverage that gives compared to my under eye that's not done? Okay, sometimes I, want a little bit more coverage around my nose. And there you go, that is my medium coverage. Now to me, it's looking a little heavy, but we're not done yet. And it's personal preference though. If you like your makeup a little bit more full coverage, you're totally After I color correct and do my main shade, I'm all even. Now I like to go ahead and contour. Now the reason I wait is because I want the best blend from my contour. I don't want this to be turn red. I still can use the coolest, which is the most gray contour, 
and it will still pull slightly warm on me because of my undertones, because of my rosacea. But doing it in this way will give me far better of a look, in my opinion, and it gives me better longevity and a better blend. If you tend to be a really patchy through here, it can either be a color issue, an exfoliation issue, or an application issue. So try applying it like this. Uh, make sure you're exfoliating a, a few times a week. And if it's still happening, reach out to your artist because it is definitely the color. Not all colors will go on the same way. Um, some are warmer, some are cooler, and sometimes knowing if you have a cool shade, if it's, depending on how it's looking, sometimes you just need to kind of adjust one shade in your contour. Okay, so next is contour. This is what gives us that three-dimensional look to our face. This is the detail brush. Now this will also give coverage. So anywhere I already put highlight, I'm just gonna get even more coverage there, which is what I like because I do have a lot of hyperpigmentation in that area. And this doesn't make it look emphasized. It kind of just makes it all blend in together. It gives me better coverage. It, it hides my hyperpigmentation. Again, I'm not moving the brush back and forth. I apply very strategically so that I'm not going to uncover all of that that I just covered. So I have more detailed videos on contour and troubleshooting, and especially if you have hyperpigmentation in areas that I can link below. Always use your highlight brush to clean up. Okay, so for the three-dimensional three look, we always do a three. So along the, the hairline, under the cheekbones, and then under the jawline. Okay, so then we're gonna go back to the picture and look at all those white lines. That's where we can accent brighten. Now, this is the third highlight. This is the lightest, okay? Now this, you can probably tell by looking, is much lighter than my skin tone. If I was to apply this directly under my eyes, it would never cover that purple and blue I have under my eyes. It would actually way increase the look of all this texture and it's gonna give me no coverage, okay? So the only way I can wear this color without it emphasizing the texture of my face is by layering it, okay? By matching the darkest points, bringing it back to, or bringing it closer to this actual color will allow this color to sit well on my skin. Otherwise, I can't wear it, it won't last. So for me, it's the only way I can do this method. Now I'm gonna kind of use that small end of the detail and I'm gonna kind of just press it on. Since I'm doing Demi under here, I'm just gonna do it on this side. You see the brightness? Now, if you go too light with this shade, it will look chalky. If it doesn't match your undertones, it can look chalky and again, emphasize too much texture. With the right color, it should match the undertones of your skin. And it will also build up cover. So depending on your face, depending on your preferences, I remember I used to not do this at all. And then, then once you start doing it, it's like, you, you feel like, why did I ever, not do it so i tend to go upside down triangle here in the center of my forehead down the center of my nose now i didn't nose contour but it's very important if you do nose contour to do it on both sides of your nose to help slim it but then i go under the eye not all the way up to the lash line because i have mature eyes i don't come out here because i have crow's feet Again, it can be placement is purely dependent upon your face. So if you just want to concentrate 
that lower triangle. This will still brighten without emphasizing texture here. Center of the chin, Cupid's bow, add light to the center of our face. Now, if you naturally have a lighter neck, press that along your jawline, okay? That will kind of tone down this area to bring it lighter to match. Can also really help you define out your contour if you're wanting to do that as well. Right, so we finished our face map. We fully highlighted and contoured. And now is the part that I don't ever recommend skipping. And I know some artists don't even show it, but I'm telling you when I learned the power of this tool, it took my makeup game to the next level. I can see a difference in texture, in the way it sits, um, the way my skin looks, all of the things, and that is the Perfector sponge. So before I even sat down, I got this baby wet underneath the faucet numerous times, and then I squeezed it out as much as I possibly could to get out every last drop, and then I squeezed it in a towel. It's been sitting here drying out while I talk. So now it's just barely damp, and I can bounce it all over my skin. Now it's super important anywhere you layered numerous shades, but I always use it everywhere since I'm always layering shades for my best match. So if you've tried Saint and you're having issues with creasing, texture, not sitting on the skin right, and you're not using this, try using the Perfector. It's the only way you can get off excess if you've applied too much. And when it comes to this makeup, I promise you everyone that starts applies too much in the beginning. It's just one of those things. I mainly concentrate it under the eye to get this part of my under eye looking like skin again. Now it no longer looks like heavy makeup. It just looks like I've got good coverage naturally under my eyes and we all know I don't. Okay, but if you're having any issues with creasing and you're not using this, this is why. Okay, now that I've done that, I can go ahead and set my under eye because no matter what, once I get off the excess there, I have to set it or I will have creasing as I blink throughout the day. Okay. Okay, anywhere you might be a little shiny, you can use it as well. Let's go ahead and do this under eye because I want to show you the full effect before I go into my favorite part, which is blush and bronzer. So for under eyes, there's only two Demi brushes I recommend, and that's the Spot and the Bright Brush. I used, over on this side of my face, I used the blush bronzer and the detail. Those are the two I recommend for beginners with 3D. These are the only two I'd say you need for Demi because Demi is a much more precise application. Okay, so I'm going to use, I probably am only going to need, depends on the day, but I'll be honest, your face changes a lot more than you think. So this is why Demi's a little bit harder to kind of learn because you'll notice some days you might only need two colors some days you might need three it can vary so the other day i did my eyes with under or my under eyes with demi and i only needed these three shades so 03 01 y01 sometimes i need this r01 for spots of hyperpigmentation but for the most part it's very simple i hit the darkest points with 03, okay, that means O is orange, that means it's excess blue. So the darkest points of my face always have excess blue. Orange, it's the color wheel. If, if it's excess blue, you need orange in order to filter it. So we're just going opposite of the color on the color wheel to solve that color. Then O1 is the next lightest. That is for those areas that aren't as dark still dark and then y01 are those that yellow orange meaning purple blue under my eyes which is a majority of my eyes are blue and purple blue and then i have some spots of hyperpigmentation which tend to be excess 
green. If they're super dark, I have to use orange on them. But if they tend to be a little bit lighter, that means they're green and I have to use something with red in it. I'll be honest, I can do almost everything with those four shades unless I have a big angry zit and then I might use a GY1, something with a little bit of green in it. Otherwise, everything else, I feel like I can use those four for. Now this is for my skin tone. Again, you can be color matched with Demi and I'll tell you which ones to start with to try out first. I apologize now because Demi is impossible to see on camera. Um, so I'm going to try to just do this real quick so you guys can see. So it didn't take too long. So you can probably see the difference. Demi, so 3D kind of more, I don't wanna say masks, but it will create more of that all one color look under your eye. Demi still kind of reveals that you have a lot of colors in your skin and it's gonna kind of let some of that still shine through with giving you, I don't know, something about it looks very youthful and light. It doesn't feel heavy. You don't have to set it. It's just very different and hard to describe until you try. It might take a little bit more trial and error, but I have so many clients that are obsessed with the fact Demi does not crease or make their under eyes look any older. It is really incredible. Let's get to my favorite part, which is blush and bronzer. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of bronzer on. I don't really feel like I need a lot, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So Bella bronzer I'd say is the most universal. I have that here. I like to swirl it with a couple of others. That's Glow Illuminator. Gives me a little bit more glow to my skin. And I'm just gonna hit the high points of my face. Okay, and then down the neck. So if you're one of those that had to put a little bit of your brightener shade along your jawline, one of the other really easy ways to kind of not have to do that is just take a little bronzer down your neck. This bronzer is amazing. It takes two seconds. It's so much easier and it will warm up your neck slight, slightly so you don't have to worry about your jawline matching up as perfectly. Okay, so lip and cheek time. Some of these aren't even available anymore. We've had a lot of limited editions lately that sell out and haven't come back. And we also have a shade of the month every month on the first at sanofficial.com that gets released and it's like wall supplies last or till the end of the month. So we're constantly having new shades. They're so much fun and I'm still obsessed with some of them, but I'm gonna show you some that are still available. Favorite is to use a little bit of a matte shade. And then I'm all about the glow, so I always like to top them with a glowy shade. So we have three different formulations, so know that when you see your color match and look at the descriptions of each, depending on your preference and what you like. So this is Nude, one of my all-time ride or dies. And I'm just going to press that on right above the contour. Add that color to the cheeks. Okay, and then probably my all-time favorite of our permanent collection shades is La Cienega. Just takes a little for a glow. This one has a gold shimmer in it, and there is nothing like her. She is so beautiful. I mean, I would pretty much put her over anything. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna grab our multitasker real quick. And I'm just gonna show you using the same contour I used to line my lips. It's 
All these creams are super multi-purpose. I'm gonna put a little bit of lip conditioner on because my lips are dry today. I'm gonna press on a little bit of that nude. You can tell it's a little bit dark on me. So then I'm gonna to top it with La Cienega to give it that gloss, to pink it up a little and give that shimmer. So you can mix, match, layer, do all the things until you get the look you want. I'm gonna pick up my Perfector one last time. And this time I'm going to use my Illuminator. So I love to use the Perfector to apply because you can be really generous. It's the only thing I really swipe into a lot. And then all you do is you take that and you pop it and just press right there on that upper part of your cheekbone. So contour, lip and cheek, Illuminator, is the magical trio. We're gonna take a little bit in our corners, under brow, Cupid's bow. I'm gonna do a quick set with our setting spray. Okay, friends, there you go. I went ahead and did my brows. There's the finished look. Can you tell the difference? <laughs> I sure hope so. <laughs> So I hope that kind of helped explain a little bit about Demi and 3D Foundation. A little intro to Saint. Of course, there are so many different application methods, tricks. I could go on and on. I have a lot of videos on my channel if you want to check them out and see what more there is to know about Saint. I feel like it's something that is never ending. I've been an artist for many years now and I'm still learning new ways to apply this makeup and new favorite ways to do things. I still feel like it gets better the more and more you use it. If you are ready to try it, I am happy to help you out. My color match questionnaire is in the drop box. The link is below the video. If you click that little down arrow, it'll open up the description and you'll see my link is pretty close to the top. Just fill that out. Tell me how you like to wear your makeup. I encourage as much information as you want to give me. Some people write me a lot of notes. Some people send me lots of different pictures and I'm completely okay with that. If you can't tell, I'm one of those people that believes more information is better than not enough. So I love to hear it. I love to customize matches for you guys so that you all love your makeup as much as I do. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I'm more than happy to help. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Love you.